Good morning, church. So lovely to be here with you today. Welcome to our online service, and we pray that you'll be blessed by the word today.
Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are here with us. Lord, we thank you that you're always our ever-present help in times of trouble. Father God, we just pray for all those who are watching online. We pray for the, anyone who needs healing, oh God. We thank you that you're the healer. Lord, we thank you that you're the restorer of health, oh God. We pray for those who are faced with redundancy, who are being furloughed, who are unsure of the future, Lord. We don't know what the future holds, but we know that you hold the future, oh God. We pray for all the children who are going through anxiety at this time, Father God. We pray that you will give their parents and carers the right words to speak to them, Lord, just to calm their fears, oh God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that is always with us and that we can call on you at any time. 
In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words of speech but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rise in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not con condemn us, we have com confidence before and receive him for everything we ask. Because we keep his commands and do not please his him. And this, sorry, and this is his command to believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and to love one another as he commands us. This one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. This is how we know he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. Good morning. Last week, Rachel shared with us about the transformation that we go through from death to life in Jesus and how that impacts us, how that changes our selves and how it affects us as we become more and more people who are in the image of Christ. This week, we are uh, speaking more about that journey and what it is to live a life of love what uh, the transformation looks like when it uh, leads us to love those around us. And uh, as Michaela read, we hear there are some pretty strong words in this section. John loves to be really clear, really direct uh, in how he speaks to us. And so uh, we have some really clear instructions on what it is to love like Jesus loved. Uh, and where it starts, I'm going to just read again, which is where Rachel finished off last week. So verse 16 of uh, the first letter of John, chapter three. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. That is uh, the sacrificial love that we are learning about this morning and uh, as we live and we become more like Jesus, we start to adopt this sacrificial love that God has for us. That is uh, how we identify Jesus' love for us, actually, through his sacrificial love for us. And uh, the transformation is done through the Holy Spirit entering our lives and it runs deep right into our hearts and our hearts begin to line up with the heart of God. And that's such a such a cool image to see our hearts become more and more in line with God's own heart for us, for our lives and for those around us as well. And there's a, a clear expectation from this passage that John lays out that um, he's saying that uh, we have a requirement to love as Jesus loved. It's not something that we can say is nice. Uh, it's nice to love others, or maybe we should, uh, as Christians, we love everyone. But actually, it's uh, a really weighty, very action-packed, action-filled, and physical form of love that uh, we are called to to be, to do, um, and to to show to other people. And we learn this from, from Jesus himself. Jesus who, uh, his life was led by compassion for others when he wanted a moment of quiet and to just rest at the end of a long day. Actually, he is called back to people to heal them, to feed them, to uh, speak to them and share with them and to to bring about God's love in their lives in every way that they need. And that is physical and emotional and spiritual. And Jesus goes back and does that time and time again, in spite of his own desire to, to rest. Um, so we see that Jesus' love is sacrificial. And the pinnacle of God's love 
the ultimate sacrifice of his love is Jesus' death on the cross, isn't it? We see Jesus in his death on the cross shows us the fullness of God's heart for us, that his love is something that is to be given away, to save, to heal, to uh, bring life to all of us. It's something that impacts me and impacts you. And it's something that we are called to pick up um, as we read in this passage that actually living in the truth, living in Jesus, who is our truth, who is the truth, um, we become more and more like him. We become more and more people of love and we live out of that place. And that's both an extremely beautiful thing and something that uh, hopefully we all aspire to and that hopefully definitely at the end of today we will aspire to, but also something that is a monumental challenge in our lives because it is hard to love the way that Jesus loved, to show this sacrificial love to those around us in uh, such an open, open-handed and powerful way. But this is what we are called to. So uh, we, we, we see as we read through that um, we've got some pretty heavy words here. In verse 17, uh, the author John writes, If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? So if we see a brother or sister in need and we have something that they need and we can give of ourselves, we can give of what we have already and we don't, how is the love of God in us? What a weighty question to ask. What a powerful thing and uh, something that cuts right into our hearts, doesn't it? Into your conscience, into your, your relationship with God. Is your relationship with God in such a place that you will give of yourself, you will give of what you have to others and not pass them up because they are in need. I think sometimes we have a fluffy view of what love looks like. Uh, and even in the church, it's really easy to say that we love people. We love everybody in our church family. That's uh, easy, it's nice, it's good, it's kind. Uh, but actually, it's not just lip service here we see. It's not just kind words or being or kind on the surface. It's actually that physical act of love that uh, that even challenges us to reach out and bless and help and support those that uh, maybe we, we have struggled to love, we struggle to like, uh, that maybe we don't agree with everybody in our church family. And we can say that we love them, but if we are not willing to give of ourselves to those people, if we are not willing to bless them when they are in need, are we really loving them? Is the love of God in us? And I guess the, the obvious answer here is no, not in its fullness. And that is that's quite a, a, hard, a hard statement to take for some of us, probably. Um, actually, we need to be practicing this love for every single person around us. Uh, this is why things like let justice flow is so so poignant right now uh, and hopefully will continue to be poignant because it's not just uh, signing a pledge, it's not just praying that we will accept all people of all races and all colours and all cultural backgrounds, but actually changing and transforming ourselves so that we actively do that, that we actively love those around us. And so this love in action uh, challenge us to be, challenges us to be better, to learn and to bless all of those around us who are in need to, and to give of ourselves to the point of putting them first. So have you seen someone in need in our church, in your street, in your neighbourhood, uh, in your family even, and you've just not helped them? You could have done, but you haven't. 
is there somebody that comes to mind right now? Maybe that's something you want to just uh, think about just for a split second. Um, if someone comes to mind, I think it can be really easy for us to become callous, especially right now when we're all facing struggles. This is a really tough season in this coronavirus pandemic and uh, it can be easy to be callous to other people's issues when our issues are really strong too. But it's really important to uh, make sure that we are reaching out to those around us in love. Uh, about a month, a month and a half ago, my uh, now 21 month year old daughter, Aurora, began a, an epic sleep regression. It was horrific. She, a sleep regression is basically where your uh, physical and biological, like your biological development hits this point where um, it starts to transition and leap from kind of one stage of growth to another. It could be like cognitive development, physical attributes, like now she loves to practice jumping. She's not got it fully, but she's practicing and um, all sorts of things like that uh, and understanding as well but it messes with their sleep and children can really struggle. They don't know what's happening. They don't know how to resettle themselves when they wake up in the night, where they used to sleep through all night or they'd just turn over and go back to sleep. Suddenly they're wide awake and they need your help to get back to sleep. And uh, my husband Ryan and I used to, we would alternate. Uh, and this went on for three and a half weeks where we would... Uh, I would try and feed her to sleep. Um, I would try and sing her to sleep, rub her back. I would sit quietly. I would tell her stories from memory because kids' stories you memorise very fast. Um, and uh, there was this point where I was even pulling out the spare toddler mattress that we happened to have. And I would lie on that and attempt to sleep while being as close to her as possible in her room so that she knew that I was there for whatever she needed. And this was a sacrifice on my part. I was about seven months pregnant at the time and very tired and need I need sleep too. Um, and she was struggling so much to this point where I knew that I needed to be there for her and support her. And my husband knew he needed to do that too. And so we did this as an act of love for her. We put ourselves out of sleep, out of bed, um, and out of our calm, relaxing environment so that we could listen to her cry and scream and struggle and attempt to get back to sleep for even three hours, night after night. Um, and this is because we love her um, and God loves us like that, but more. <laughs> Um, it's not even so difficult because it's just parenting. Um, it's my child. I love her infinitely. I love her unconditionally. Uh, if it's if it's someone, though, who isn't my child or my spouse or my family, um, maybe it's not so easy. It's not always as easy for me to love other people um, as I love my own family. And maybe you can think, of someone specifically who needs God's active love working in their lives right now. Someone, maybe you've even passed up that opportunity before to show them love, the love of God. And uh, if God is bringing someone to your mind, maybe grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and just jot their name down um, and talk with God about this today, this week, um, and through this lockdown about uh, maybe even deciding now, like the next time you see that they are in need, you are going to find a way to meet that need for them if you can. And talk to God about that. Because God wants to transform us through showing us how to lay down our lives for other people. And we have a real opportunity right now uh, because we are in this pandemic and this is a really tough season. <laughs> Uh, and it's a tough season for everyone. We are struggling, all of us, in uh, various ways, and some more than others. Christmas is not going to be easy this year, regardless of whether restrictions are lifted um, or different. And 
people are really feeling the pinch. Many people are furloughed right now and on uh, sh smaller wages and struggling to make ends meet. Many people are jobless now and just have nothing coming in. Many people have lost and are grieving and that's such a tough time coming up to Christmas for them. And there are many people who are struggling in isolation as well, who might already have been on their own, but now because of this, they're so cut off from um, any sort of a social life that is positive that they can access. And we, as a church community, are called to love, are called to reach out, to see what we can do to meet those needs. Can you help someone that you know this month, this season, uh, or even tomorrow or next week? Uh, are there other people who you can uh, reach out to? Are there people you can ask, what do you need right now? And we can give of our material possessions. We're called to give of our material possessions, but also we can give of our resources like time. Right now, one of the, four, the few things we can do is go for a one-to-one -one walk with someone out in the fresh air, distanced. Maybe somebody seeing a physical face and being able to talk through what's going on is going to be the best thing for them right now. Can you give of your time? One of the best ways that you can give of your money if you want to bless someone who is struggling financially is actually to give to the Friend in Need Fund that the church has, has set up. Uh, and this is specifically so that we can gather in um, money from those who have and give it to those who are in need um, as as they need and to be able to support them in a wider sense through that and as a church community so that um, they can really be blessed and they can uh, stay on their feet if they and get on their feet and continue to live um, without the restrictions that are pinching people that are stopping people right now so if you want to give financially to support other people um, please do contact community at mhechurch.com and uh, we can facilitate that for you and help you to give so that they can um, they can be they can be blessed through you and through our church working together in John 15 verse 13, so the Gospel of John. Um, we have a lot of parallels between the Gospel of John and then these letters of John as well to the church communities that he's writing to. Uh, he really talks about uh, Jesus, Jesus' love and how that looks. And Jesus himself says in John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. We are called to be sacrificial, to live in the love of God and to lay down our lives for each other. And the more that we practice this love, the more we walk in the truth and the truth is Jesus. And um, we see our that in verse 21 it goes on to say our hearts do not condemn us we have confidence before God and we receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him and the command is to believe in Jesus and to follow him and the more that we follow him the more we uh, become like Jesus the more that we outwork this love that we are called to the more our transformation happens, we lay down our lives and we pick up the life that Jesus has for us. And that is a good life. That is a life that is full and abundant um, and it is close to God. So I'm going to pray for us now and uh, I hope that, um, that God will continue to speak to us through this week about what it is to love and what love means to us as well. Father God, we thank you that you love us so much, so much, and that your love is sacrificial, that it impacts us, that it is something that brings us into family and unity with you. And God, as we become like Jesus, as we 
follow you, Jesus, as we um, let the Spirit transform us, then we become people who are in line with your heart. Our hearts line up with your heart, God. And we see and we love those around us. And God, I ask that you will help us to love those around us the way that you do. That you will help us to reach out and be transformed by your ever-giving, ever-sacrificial love. And God, will we understand the fullness of your love today in our lives, in the lives of our friends, of our family, of our church family. And God, will you continue to help us bless those around us, especially in this next month or two or three. Amen.
Lord, we thank you for your word that was shared today. Father, we pray that we would walk forward, taking on this newness with us, Lord, that we would, we would seek you each day, Lord, that we would know that your love is with us, that it is for us, that you delight so greatly in us, Lord. We thank you for that love. We thank you for, for who you are. And I pray that you'd bless everyone that is watching. I pray that this week we would just know in our hearts that you are here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.